I'm Dave D, and you're. I'm Dave D, and you're watching XP Team USA. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Big Detecting Show. A little bit of a relaunch this week. Some of the things will remain the same for the time being, but they will be evolving, uh, as you will see very shortly with the introduction of our first new thing, and that is a co-host. Good evening, Mr. Adrian Gaylor, who's our first go co-host. How are you, good sir? Good evening, Dave. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, thank are you, you well? very much. Yeah, good, I'm good. Good. I'm good, thanks. Yeah, very well. So uh, we've we've looked at inviting people along as a uh, weekly co-host, Adrian being the first. Next week we'll be joined by Mr. Aaron Weedle. And then we've got two others to uh, confirm. And then thereafter we'll be obviously all sorted and taking it in turns here, there and everywhere. So uh, thank you for agreeing to join us. And uh, you can't see the full picture at the moment, but uh, on the left of... Uh, Adrian's image is the Treasure Hunting Magazine, and on the right is Greenlight Publishing. There you go. Look at that. Very nice. I love the way you've got right in the middle. Oh. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, flash. Um, yeah. Not as uh, much as a flash as we had earlier. No, better not talk about that. <laughs> yeah. And that guy, oh no, that guy, he's been there for a about half an hour, so he's got quite a big hole he's digging, so he'll be there for quite a bit. I think it's a scarecrow, to be honest. Where's your damage? And there's someone about to go in your ear. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, tonight uh, we will be joined shortly by our two guests for this evening, uh, Digger Dawn and Digger's Dips. Uh, that's Mr Chris Bailey. So, Chris will be introducing you to, uh, well... I'll let Chris tell you when he comes along, but we will be having a free prize draw tonight. Unfortunately, the prize draw uh, was was ended at 3 p.m. this afternoon, so they could fill the um, random number generator with the correct names, et cetera, et cetera, and set it up. So, uh, unfortunately, there's no more uh, people can enter at this point. So, next week, hopefully, if all works out well, there will be another go. And... Uh, this is uh, this is what's called a mistake with daughter's hair dye. <laughs> it hasn't turned out. Uh, it makes me look like I'm trying to look young instead of trying to look cool, or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> Hello to everybody already in the chat room. First and foremost, I'll have to say Nick West because he's always first. Uh, Darren Booth, history on Earth. Uh, Rob Random, Bob Hope, uh, Dirt Diggers UK, Scott and Kimmy. Good evening. Uh, Tony K. Wood, Facebook user, lovely man, that Facebook user. Uh, Marky Mark Lawson, good evening. Pete Sheldon, uh, Four Town Searches, Nice VA85, Diggers Den Tyson Fury, and Suffolk Search and Metal Detecting UK. Good evening, everybody. So, uh, the first thing that we're going to introduce uh, is to our weekly schedule is that of a pre-recorded news broadcast instead of me doing it. And hey, Mr Higgins has made it. So uh, straight over, share the screen, share the audio before I forget that. And let's go in the news. And first up, a great little video I found online. Man sends brother on treasure hunt 
for message in a bottle so for those tv viewers you can watch the video um for those on the on the radio version uh, have a listen and i'll explain at the end of the clip let's check it out huh how did that get there what is this well do you put it in here no no what does it say open it What does it say? It could be a prank. Okay, what does it say? A prank? It says, hey, Joe. You're the, what? You, you are, are a, already? already the best bro. And also the best friend. So, so will you please say yes to be my best man? Love, Will. What? We want to be my best man? <laughs> so for the podcast listeners what you've just heard is a video of a man in america that buried a bottle with a message in it for his younger brother uh, and the message was asking his younger brother who suffers from down syndrome to be his best man at his wedding so we go from that to the news from garrett metal detectors and they have now announced that they are bulk shipping production orders of the new ace apex multi-frequency metal detector from their texas manufacturing facility and certainly i know on the field i've got an awful lot of people that are very curious about this new machine from garrett the garrett ace apex and we move on to the news that over 44,000 historical items have been unearthed across the UK since June 2019. And out of the 10 regions listed with the most treasure discoveries in the past 12 months, these include Norfolk with 6,527, Leicestershire with 4,101, Suffolk with 3,105, Lincolnshire with 2,650, Hampshire with 2,006, Wiltshire with 1,689, Oxfordshire with 1,647, North Yorkshire with 1,508, East Riding of Yorkshire 1,322, and Somerset with 1,209. 44,000 objects in a year. Uh, that's pretty, pretty incredible for our hobby. And we move on to another product development, one that I'm really, really interested in. The first real kids detectors released for sale soon. So we probably all tried those national uh, geographic things that cost about 15, 20 quid. Uh, I know I bought uh, I bought one each for Nelly and Bonnie and uh, utterly, absolutely hopeless. I mean, you, you couldn't even use them uh, as part of a as part of a game, just completely ineffective as a metal detector. But not to macro, of course, the kings of innovation have decided to develop the world's first waterproof kids metal detector. And this will be available in both the mini and midi horde. We don't have an exact date uh, yet as to when these will be available on sale, but we do know that it will be soon. It's going to be long, more like weeks than months uh, before you or your kids will be able to get their hands on a Nocta Macro Mini or Midi Horde. And we will be having a special show in the coming weeks here on the Big Detecting Show, which will be based solely around uh, this new innovation from Nocta Macro. So keep your eyes and ears open for that one. A year in there or thereabouts on the Big Metal Detecting Show. So, um, Thanks uh, to everyone that's watched, especially our regulars that tune in week in, week out. Um, I'm not going to do shout outs because I will forget people. I know I forget some names, but, you know, to everyone that has come on as a uh, guest, um, to everyone that comments uh, on the shows, to everyone that listens and watches. Thank you very, very much. It's, it really is much appreciated. It is a show by Detectorists for Detectorists. We're not professional. And there is one guy I want to give a shout out to, and that's Dave Sadler, because uh, it's not always easy, um, in, all, in all honesty. And it's, uh, it's a lot easier for me uh, when things to start, start to go wrong 
when I'm not the one on camera. So uh, well done, Dave, mate. Um, good job. And uh, this is the first of a, a series of kind of um, the show's going to be going an ev- uh, over a bit of an evolution over the last the next uh, kind of four or five to six weeks. So we're going to be adding in some new seg- segments. Um, we're going to have a co-host uh, with Dave each week. And uh, each week we're going to be adding something new uh, to the show to try and make it better. Uh, but thank you very much. And I hope you enjoy uh, tonight's episode with Digger Dawn um, and, uh, and Dave and his co-host, who is Adrian Gaylor from Treasure Hunting Magazine. So a fantastic co-host. So thanks very much, guys. And yeah, please share the link, share the show, and let us know if there's anything we can do for you. Well, there you go. That was uh, young Mr. Luke. Thank you very much, Luke. Uh, I, th- I think that worked very well. Uh, much better than me scrolling through it on screen. So, uh, as I said, something that we are introducing is the pre-recorded slots. Um, we'd also like anybody to uh, who would like to, to offer a, a short video, be it one to two minutes long, in the field, talking about a find, talking about a new machine. Uh, e- even a new segment that they feel uh, should be included in the show, and we'll be more than happy to uh, include that. Uh, so, uh, what do you think of that, uh, Mr. Gaylor? Oh, sorry, Dave, what was that? Oh, there he is. What did you think of the news? Um, sorry, did I freeze then? <laughs> you did, you went like that, and you've done it again. <laughs> So I will crack on unabated without Mr. Gaylor for the time being. Uh, this is what Luke are on about our technical difficulties every now and again. But hey, uh, we aren't professional. We try to be, but we're not. So I'm going to go back to sharing the screen because uh, we've got some images to look at uh, from uh, the big metal detecting show facebook page uh this one was actually pointed out to me from andy jones at metal detecting britain and beyond uh, a chap called glenn lister's um finds and we're hoping to have glenn on in the coming weeks to talk about his uh, metal detecting and hell look at them absolutely stunning um yeah still waiting for gold and still waiting for one of them as well ian jackson sky's dad uh Always sends his images to the big metal detecting show Facebook group. Uh, He's had the ring up today. So this is Ian's ring from today. And uh, very nice indeed. Uh, Looking forward to being able to see that cleaned up properly and uh, find out any information about it too. He also posted this image of all the seals that he has. And... uh, I uh, I pointed out a gentleman to him that you may know in the metal detecting community called Jed Dodd. Uh, Jed Dodd, uh, he's a, a bit of an expert on Russian bag, um, Russian flax seals. I think I've got that right. I've actually got a a, a book that a small book that Jed put together regarding him a few years ago. Uh, but on the back of this image that Ian put on, um, Phil Taylor put this one on of his bag seals. Uh, now, in the first image, there was none, uh, Jed said, that were of the uh, the flag seal that he um, looks at and his website looks at, Project Peace Havens, I think it is. Uh, but on this image, and I'm, I'm not sure, uh, I'm not wise, but uh, apparently eight of these are the Russian types. I've just seen one there that looks absolutely stunning. Where is it? Look at that. Star of David. Beautiful. That's me, that. But I'm not a star. And uh, and that's it. That's the images for this week. So uh, if we go back and let's see if Mr. Gaylor has unfrozen. Mr. Gaylor, have you unfrozen? Here he is. Hello, Adrian. Have you always unfrozen? Sorry, I've got Virgin Media 250 meg broadband, right? And it never, ever plays up. Shouldn't advertise, but... And it's just upstairs. It just keeps dropping out so i thought i'd uh, drop the green screen and uh, come downstairs <laughs> sorry about well that. you might have saw the news segment I did. I saw the news a lot better I thought it was really good it is um, he's done that fantastic I, I asked him luke how'd you do that so i can you know do it in the future 
Um, yeah. I, I don't think I've got the editing options. I've got uh, something called Kind Master on my phone, but other than that, I haven't got the options. And uh, yeah. hey, let, let him do that. I like that's the way it's news that's not often been seen by a lot of people. So yeah, uh, yeah. Is, I don't know what, where Luke gets it from, but no, it was really, really good. So well, I, I've fun. actually got a uh, another video to play a little bit later on from news uh, from the TV series Aussie Gold Hunters, which has come out oh. this week. A yeah, uh, short yeah. video of two absolutely massive gold nuggets that have been discovered. Uh, and, and then we've just had a look at uh, some of the images that have been posted on the uh, Big Metal Detecting Show, sorry, Big Detecting Show Facebook group this week by Ian Jackson and Glenn Lister. Uh, so we've we've had a look through them. And there was I found a, in, gold last week, Dave. Did you really? What did you find? Do you want to see it? Yes, please. Um... Oh, see that? No, here it comes. There you are. Oh, very nice. William the Third, sixteen ninety-six, half guinea. Beautiful. Um, yeah, and uh, that was uh, something which is the usual story. Just before you go home. Uh, said to my mate, should we detect just that bit of uh, field there? And uh, it's three inches down, which amazes me. But very, very nice coin. Stunning. Yeah. And you know what? For me, it's also nice to see somebody else else is uh, sharing the screen because obviously when I'm sharing the screen, I don't see what's on what everyone oh. else is see. So it, it's, right. it's great for me to see that. Yeah. So uh, thank you for that. Right, I'm going to bring on our guest for tonight, uh, Chris Bailey from Digger's Dips and the lovely Digger Dawn. How are you both? Oh, there they are. There's Chris and there's Dawn. I'm all right. I'm a little bit snotty, but I'll be all right. <laughs> I'll get through it. <laughs> we, we can't see you dripping from here anyway. <laughs> I'll, I'll put my nose bones in if it gets bad. <laughs> so uh, tonight, Dawn's going to be introducing the uh, Garrett Apex uh, in a little while. Uh, obviously, Dawn's got the Apex. It's new to the country, as Luke spoke about in the news. And, of course, Chris is here from Digger's Dips. He's going to be discussing a uh, bit of a relaunch for yourselves as well, Chris. <laughs> well, it's a bit slow. He's <laughs> <laughs> going a bit slow. <laughs> Can't hear a word you say. You 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 stuttering, Chris. <laughs> it's a lovely yeah. art, though. Yeah, we can hear you. Nice art. <laughs> right, go on. Let's try again, then, Chris. Right. I'm, I'm oh, it's technical. <laughs> technical heaven here this morning, isn't it? Oof. So anyway. Uh, on Chris's behalf, is that okay, Chris, if I crack on? <laughs> Modern technology. Chris must be on Virgin as well. Chris is upstairs. <laughs> nice hat. It's a fantastic... I want one of them hats. Oh, the hat's gone. Dave. <coughs> yes, Dave. Luke. Could, could I? Sorry to interrupt. Could I suggest that maybe Chris hasn't accepted audio? Well, I can't. I can't hear anything now. Oh, no, we can't. We can't. We can hear him. It's just uh, it's juttering a bit. <laughs> Chris, can you hear me now? <laughs> right. Very well, and very, slow. very intermittent. Chris, is it okay if I introduce what? I, I obviously I can't speak as well as yourself. But basically, uh, Digger's Dips have offered to include a free prize draw uh, weekly on the show, uh, which will take place tonight at 8.45, as we said at the start of the show. So people who have uh, entered before, uh, what time was it, 3 p.m. this afternoon, obviously will will be included in the draw. I think it's 40 to 50 people have actually participated. So that will be done on the Digger's Door. Do <laughs> digger's Door. He told me, one, one, Chris said this had happened on the Digger Dips <laughs> uh, website. So, on the Digger Dips website, this will take place at 8.45. We'll put it on live so you'll be able to see exactly what's going on. And uh, 
the, the draw, you'll see who wins. And then the person who wins will be credited, I think, on, on this uh, particular show, uh, 10 tokens. That's a value of around £10, which they can use in any of the pri further prize draws in the future up there whenever. Chris, can we hear you yet? No. <laughs> 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 Did it do all right then, Chris? Was that all all right? You like that, Chris? <laughs> right. So I'll show something. I'll show a brief video. Uh, I'll show a brief video now. Something that Diggers Dips are going to be introducing is similar to a scratch card. Not if that's right, Chris. <laughs> 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 See if I can change my internet. <laughs> okay, you do that. You do that, and I'll crack on for a moment. Oh, I don't know what that's going on anymore. It's all gone pots. So anyway, right. So Chris is going to be. Uh, I'll share the screen and I'll play a video on Chris's behalf that he sent me today. Look, sharing. I've, I've ticked audio, so we're all right there. So as soon as the machine starts to share. I'll pop over to this file, and this file, there it is, and we'll play this video. So, this is a video on behalf of Diggers Dips. This is a new game uh, to be included. So, uh, as you can see, there's Scratch Card, uh, 39 different locations, and the person is taking, going through the field, having a little metal detect on the field, as you can see by the little thing found nothing oh, and they found some shotgun shells so they're worth five points so when we get good connections off chris chris will obviously be able to tell us a little bit better so uh, i'm assuming that points make prizes as the old mr forsyth used to say old mcdonald's farm what well, there's, there's an old McDonald who has a farm that we can metal detect. <laughs> EI, EI, oh. So, I think you basically that gives you uh, an introduction into that. So, it's the uh, new Diggers Dip, uh, Diggers Dig, oh, yeah, uh, Diggers <laughs> Digs game. A musket ball, 10 points. So, uh, hopefully, we'll be able to learn more about that momentarily. Oh, <laughs> So then there's also, as you can see, a leaderboard. So I would assume, therefore, the person with the most um, points from the Diggers Dips games, Diggers Digs games, will be on a leaderboard and there will be a, uh, a restart and a, a prize for the person in top place. Uh, so that was the current game. So that's what the, that, the game that we've just seen. That's what was found in that. So it's, uh, it was worth a lot of points, about 160 points there. So, uh, that's, that's in short, the new Diggers Digs game, which I, uh, as I say, I'm hoping Chris will be able. Chris, you look like you're actually in a Happy Mondays video now. It's all gone Pete Tong. But we'll we will get there eventually. It, is that it? Is it? Hello, Luke. Luke's popping in. Are you, Chris? Can you hear me, Chris? <laughs> I think that's look, an old day. Look! Look how professional my co-host is being here, laughing. That's better. <laughs> <laughs> Just laughing. <laughs> oh, let's go back into the chat room. See who's here. MS Detectorist, XP, uh, Robert Hunter Collinson, official gold digger, um, Mark 80 Prozac, uh, Aaron Weedle. Good evening, Aaron. Look, look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, Kevin ID, I dig Roche, uh, Mr. Pete Terrell. Hello there. Uh, he says put some new batteries in, Chris. <laughs> uh, David Dickinson. Is that the actual David Dickinson? Um, John Clayton, Bubba Williams, XP, Zops, Metal Detecting, Hello to South Africa, and to John Webb. Let's crack on a little bit more, and uh, let's let's have a chat to Dawn while Chris gets sorted. Dawn, how are you? 
I'm fine. I'm sorry I've got a bit of the giggles. You've, everything's just made me laugh tonight. <laughs> <laughs> See, it was worth coming on just for that. <laughs> Adrian, ask the lady some questions. Go on then. Suck it to me. <laughs> Adrian's gone. Oh, there he is. I was muted, probably because I was laughing too much. Um, Dawn, everyone on here tonight, no doubt, is interested in something that you received the other week. Yeah. Um, your Garrett Apex. Yeah. Um, yeah, seen some YouTube videos. Um, what What would you say are the just three points, I know there's a lot, that you, so far, you've only used it a few times, I understand, would you say I've that... I've done it probably about 26 hours with it. Right. I, I thought okay. I'd try and work stuff with hours because I've had, it, I've had it a few weeks before everybody else. And the one that I've got, I was, I was thinking at the time when it came that it was going to be a finished product, but it's still a little bit as a test product. It's not the same yeah. one as it's been shipped out at the minute. So it was still yeah. in test feature, which I've been giving Garrett feedback on. What would um, you say... Sorry. What would you say are the top three things that you like about it the minute you've turned it on and used it in the field? Uh, obvi the first thing that really, really hit me, which I, I was absolutely overjoyed about, was the weight. Yeah, yeah. Going from an AT match with an L coilon, which is, is quite heavy. I mean, I, did, I have got one big, massive shoulder, a, a big, massive muscle there because, from the AT max. But I was getting a little bit of elbow problems, mm. you know, like with it. I, it, my elbow was starting to hurt. Anyway, since I was using that, the, the lightness of it and the way it's balanced and the way it swings is absolutely a dream. Yeah. I was I was walking around the field making noises like, going, oh, it was so <laughs> lovely. So, yeah, that that's the first thing that I really, really like about it. <clears throat> the Obviously, I'm still learning it. You know, yeah. if, if anybody knows me, is I'm not one of these people that can chop and change really quickly. What I like to do is to get a machine and then learn it until it's an extension of my arm. Mm -hmm. I like to really, really know that. So it's taken me a little bit of a while. But I'm swapping through the frequencies. Um, yeah. I've been having to go on, on the 5, 10, 15, 20. I've been doing the multi-frequency. Um, I've got to say one of the things that I do I'm really super impressed by was the the, the beach mode, you know the yeah. MS salt mode. Yeah. Um, I took it. I went to Blackpool. I'm no beach detectorist. I am a complete novice on there. I'll hold my hands up. But I have been beach detecting before, and I've been with my Euro Ace. I've been with 400. I've been with my AT Max, and this Apex was. It, it, it far out, it, it outdid all of those. I mm. had it running in full sensitivity. I took it right up to the water's edge. <clears throat> the, it was so quiet, you know, like um, I, I, I really couldn't hardly believe it myself. I mean, luckily I bumped into somebody that I knew called Ken on the beach while I was there. Um, and he, he, he does beaches quite a lot on Blackpool Beach. And if you don't mm. know Blackpool Beach, it's quite highly mineralised. It's not one of the best beaches to do. Um, and he's got an Equinox 800, and I, I bumped into him there, and I was showing him, and he could, even he couldn't believe it. He said, Don, I'll back you up. If he said, if anybody needs to, you know, evidence of what it's like, he was really, really impressed. So I think, you know, in terms of it, it, it you know, because Garrett's haven't been the best on the beach, have no, they? No, they haven't. No, definitely you No, know, that's, that's one been always been a bit of the failings. You've had to turn sensitivity right down and, the, you know, the multi-frequency on a beach works far better than a single frequency. So I think this is going to really skyrocket Garrett back into beach mode because that multi-salt frequency is somewhere else. It really yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Um, one other thing which... I was quite surprised about when I got it out. Oh, well, I should tell people not. I've, I've got one here, which I briefly mentioned to you, Dawn, um, when we came on. Is the coil? It's um, it's it's it seems really small at first. Did you think that, Dawn? Well, I, I do, initially I thought the same because obviously I've been using a an L coil, which is yeah. massive, it's like a bin lid. And when I looked at it at first, I thought, ooh, that's a bit small. But what I have found with it, it, it has been good. I've been going on a bit of trashy areas. I've been trying to test everything and 
just having that narrowness is not really affected it that much. It's not. No. It's not as small as what I would have expected. I, I was really surprised. Um, it's it's a lovely design that coil, yeah. very slim, but yeah, it still covers a fair bit of ground. And I yeah. was out in the stubble uh, last weekend, and it was an absolute dream. Um, it, it just getting between you know the stubble and and, and the plough as well. Uh, it's a lovely. I mean, they must have gone and spent quite a bit of time researching this, that sort of size. But going back to what you said about the weight, I think it's nearly half a kilogram lighter than the simplex. Um, yeah, and, very, very, and he's he's really well balanced. I think because yeah. they haven't got the battery compartment in anymore, and it's just a small unit on the top. I think yeah. the balance of it, it's just you don't feel. I mean, I don't feel like I've got anything in, in my hammer at all. No, you know, because I, like I say I've been used to a big, a big massive AT match with a massive coil on. Yeah, you. I, 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 I was eight hours and uh, just didn't ache at all afterwards. Um, it, no, it's very, it, you're right. It's not just the weight; it's the balance. And I mean, they've used the original Garrett grip, haven't they? Which well, that, you know, that's not an Ace grip. That that's a, a grip off the AT Max. Yeah, yeah. And but, so, and, and that's better because I don't really like that foamy. I mean, the foamy ones are all right, but I've, I've always preferred the one that's a little bit more solid. That's yeah. on the AT Max. If, if yeah. it's not broken, don't fix it. Do you know what I mean? That's the one. They're, they're that's but um, what, where have you, um, so what sort of land have you, you've been on the beach, you've been on pasture. Um, I've been on beach, but I'm not a, a beach detective, so might no. as well, you might as well class me as a beginner because I don't know. But, you know, and, and there was a few people that was knocking about the internet saying, oh, well, we don't send her, we need a proper expert on the beach. But, you know, I believe that if, you, if, a, if a beginner can do something, then an, an expert can take that further. You know, yeah, exactly. and I went on there absolutely clueless, really. Well, not completely clueless, but I went on there, you know, clueless-ish. And I was able to, you know, keep it quiet. I wasn't messing with the settings. What you saw was what it was actually happening. You know, yeah. I wasn't yeah. able to manipulate it because I knew beach detecting really well or anything like that. I tried to bury a few gold things. It was a bit difficult because <laughs> it's all coming back up and that, but I tried my best. And I've yeah. got to say with the uh, multi-frequency as well, the gold signal on that machine, this is my third thing, the gold signal on the machine is very, very solid. Yeah. I don't think that if you if you went over any gold that you'd miss it. No. Because you know, sometimes the machines, are, 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 gold can be, be a bit rough, can it? You know, like oh, you God, yeah. more, more 50s. But the gold sound on that, the apex, is really, really clear, i found. Yeah, yeah. I um, I was quite surprised actually because I use my gold wedding ring every time, um, like an air test, and then dig it down a few inches. And you're right, the tones are really nice, really, really well, nice. Well, that can we have number four things that I really like about it because the tones, uh, there's five tones now instead of the three. You can't. Sorry, you can't have four. Hey. You can't have four. Only three. No, I was joking. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Well, the tones. I mean, another thing. I think. I think what Garrett have done, and I, you know, I, I do know uh, Garrett quite well. You know, when they come over to England, and I spend a lot of time with them. And uh, the new guy, Steve Mavakovic, who you will have seen on the the adverts, he's been like the new CEO of Garrett. And since he took over, he's really tried to speak to customers. I mean, I, I watched him at Detectable, and he was walking around, and people didn't know who he was. And he was really asking them questions about what they would like and what what they would like to see. And he took that on and tried tried to do it. So you know the the, the days of Garrett just sticking to the old thing mm. have, have gone because he's new and he's and he's listening to the customer. And I think that the customer have wanted is multi frequency. They've wanted it going on the beach, all right. And the, the, the you know the bing bong tones. You know yeah. everybody goes goes bing bing bang bing bang bing bang, which. <laughs> They can be a little bit like that, can't they? Where this, these now with these new five tones, they're very muted. They're not, yeah. they're not that bing bong that they were before. They're, they're very, very muted. They're nice to the ear. You can tell the difference in them. So you, you know, you're not just listening to, you know, like you were before. You've got that the, the five, and like I say, they are muted and they're really nice, quite nice and musical to your ear. Yeah, it's a nice yeah, it is, it's, it's a pleasure to listen to, actually. Um, yeah. I've, I've got a question here. Is it all right if I ask someone in the chat 
Dave. Yeah, certainly, certainly. Yeah. Sarp's metal detecting, South Africa. He said, I still don't understand why Garrett would bring out a detector that have a beach mode but fail at making it waterproof. Well, I don't know Garrett as well as Dawn, but I'm reckoning there may be an Apex Pro coming up soon or in the distant future. They've, they've hinted that there is going to be um, an Apex AT, which I, can, I, I believe there will be. Yeah. And if I can make an analogy um, with, with certain things, it's like if you bought a Fiesta car like I've got, you can get a Fiesta, you can get a bog standard, and then you can get bits and bits and bits and bits and bits to up to the ST line, yeah. right? Then you've got the Fiesta ST. Mm. Now, you know, the ST line has got all the bits, but it ain't quite got the power and extra bits of the ST. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's what they've done. I mean, if you look at, I mean, I've, I've weighed it up a lot. I've seen a lot of people trying to say, is it better than the AT Max? Is it better than this? Is it better than that? It's exactly where it's supposed to be, in my, in my opinion, anyway. Mm. It's as an upgrade from any of the Ace Theories, the Ace 400i, I would say all day long. You know, with the weight, with the wireless, with the multi-frequency, with everything else, it's a massive upgrade on the A series. Will it take on the AT series? Um, yeah, it's got features if you, especially if you're a beat detectorist. Yes, mm. but you know, it's still it's it, it's not quite as uh, reactive. You know, the reactivity is not quite as fast as the AT is. Um, obviously, the weight's better. I think when the AT um, Apex comes out, which I'm quite sure it will, with the fast re a faster reactivity, waterproof and everything else like that. I think that's going to be a, a machine of, of the dreams. I think that is going to be a machine of dreams. But yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah, people go on about waterproof. I mean, I don't know if you saw my last video, but um, it was absolutely torrential rain. And my friend, me and my friend Kev, we went out and we got absolutely drowned. And I left that machine out in the rain constantly all the time. And not a thing wrong with it. I had no cover on it, nothing or other like that. So I think the weatherproofing and the waterproofing is, is just something where it's not as big a deal as what people are making out, I don't think. No. It's, I'm not it's, saying about the beach. You know, yeah. why make it a good beach detector and then not have it waterproof, but... I took it to the beach and, you know, I, I, I was at the water's edge and I dropped it on the floor and stuff like that. It was, it was all right. Yeah, I, I think, think, I think you're right there. Water. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, I think you're right there. It's a bit like having cruise control in your car. You don't, yeah. most of us don't ever use it. But, I mean, the only times I get my detectors wet is when I'm in the field and fall in a ditch, which seems to be quite <laughs> often. Um, and that is sober. Um, but you know, when I go on the beach where I live near Essex, the beaches are full of trash pretty much, and um, and they're a bit of a nightmare. There is some occasional ones which are quite clean, but it, it's a bit of a nightmare. But I'm, I was surprised when the um Apex came out. Have you the Garrett do a cover for it, Dawn? Not that I know of at the minute, they've not, no. they, I think they're in the process of making some new coils. So they're going to have new coils that can fit on because at the minute the uh, technology in the in the Viper coil only fits the the Apex um, technology in the, its body. Um, so you can't put a nail on or anything else like that. You can't swap any other coil onto it at the minute. But I think they're, they're producing uh, uh, their own coils for that. But no, yeah. not that I've heard of. But I've, I've heard that there's already some something in the pipeline of someone else making a cover for it. Now, can I interject, sorry. people? Uh, we're shortly going to go have to go over to the uh, the Digger Dips live draw. So I, I apologise for interrupting. We'll get back to this later. Uh, but obviously, I just want to bring Chris back to, to introduce the draw, if that's OK, because I think we've got Chris back. Let's all laugh at Chris. <laughs> <laughs> the big thing is, can you hear me? Here he is. Yay! We've got him. He's fallen over. Yeah. He's fallen difficult. over and he can't get up. Right, you can hear me now, yeah? Yes, yes Chris. Well, we've got, we've got three and a half minutes till the draw. So, uh, obviously, I played the videos and that before, Chris. 
I, yeah. I think I was able to give a, a basic uh, introduction into what the new uh, digger dips, uh, diggers digs is going to be uh, occurring. I will come back to that a little bit later so you can explain in full. But uh, before that, if you would uh, like to, obviously, we've got a, three minutes to go. So if you can give an introduction to what's happened tonight, if that's okay. Right, well, I have to talk very slow to make three minutes <laughs> Um Right, well, obviously the draw, um, that's going to be a regular thing on your show. Uh, we're going to set that up every week. Um, and as things develop, um, probably, you know, ch- prizes will change and so on. But now it's just, it's, it's just yeah, it's the first one. Um, I think what we'll do is that we, how can I put it? Um no, I can't put it in any way at all, actually. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing much to say about this draw, really, because it's just it's just there. Um, it's going to happen tonight. That'll be the first one. Um, and then, like I say, we'll just do one every single week for everybody. That's fantastic. Well, we do appreciate it, and obviously the, the, the viewers and listeners appreciate it. Uh, so, obviously, that's going to be a weekly thing. And how it's doing it, Chris, what we've done this week, we ask people who are who, to sign up to Diggers Dip so they can have a screen name and then tag somebody else. And obviously, that's it. That's pinned to the top of the Big Detecting Show Facebook page. I had to read it on the screen and I forgot it. Um, and then, obviously, by three o'clock on every Thursday, all the names will be taken, put into the um, how it works, your, your background and what have you. And then 8.45 every week, we have a draw. And that's about it, really, yeah? Yeah, that's spot on. And it's nearly 8.45. It certainly is. Uh, that's that's the Diggers Dip website, as you can see. Luke's pulled that up. Uh, but I'm going to be going over in about a minute and a half over onto the <clears throat> uh, the page itself to show you the draw that's taking place tonight, uh, which I actually won on one of the dips the other night on one of the coin draws. And I won a um, a, a, Rome, a silver Roman denarius. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing that because I'm still to find Roman as well as gold and, well, most things really. <clears throat> Lots of buttons and pieces of lead and <laughs> rings off rings off tent tarpaulins and such like. But there you go. Mm. So we've got a minute to go. So I'm going to uh, share the screen again, and we will. Go over to Diggers Dips as soon as it shares. Is it sharing? There we go. So uh, we can chat amongst ourselves. So, uh, Chris, what what actually happens when it reaches zero? Right. Well, as you on the last five seconds, the screen slightly changes. It does the countdown, um, and then what happened? Then the um, the numbers will start counting down. Well, the actual numbers will come up. Um, just a random number selector. Uh, they'll play, um, and it's, it do one. It stops one reel at a time, and then it'll announce the winner. Fantastic, simple. I've, I, the only one we when you were on a couple of weeks ago, obviously we watched the draw, uh, but generally I actually forget when I'm in one, even though I get a reminder. So uh, here we go. We're coming up to five seconds, and I'll let you announce the winner, Chris. Oh, the tension. Who is that exciting? Zero. <laughs> One. It's in the teens then. <laughs> Number ten. Okay, and the winner is Lewis. Is that Lewis? Oh, you've taken off the screen. Lewis, um, Lewis COV. Lewis COV. So uh, I take it Lewis will now be contacted by email to tell him he's won and that will be credited to his account. Yeah, that will be, be done very quickly. What we'll do, we, we send out, um, normally send out an email to say you're a winner uh, and they normally claim, they send back the details of the claim. But in this case, we'll just credit him with his t- 10 tokens. That's fantastic. Well, thank you very much for that, uh, Chris. Um, we're going to go to uh, adverts momentarily, and then we will uh, we will come back and continue chatting with Chris about Digger's Depths and with Dawn about the Apex with Mister Adrian. Uh, and I went over to show you. Oh, DJ. 
I'm Dave D, and you're watching XP Team USA. Well, I've just been reading through the comments and uh, Luke, can you bring yourself on screen a moment, please? Come on, Luke. Come on. Come on, Higgins. Luke, is it your birthday? No. Oh. Uh, no. <laughs> <Was> somebody <laughs> called Luke's birthday. You're getting lots of happy birthdays. Uh, yeah, definitely not mine, mate. Oh, Unless all the right. Alzheimer's is really set in. Well, I'll just go and check if Laura's bought you anything anyway. <laughs> And if not, tell her why. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not mine, my friend. Okay, young man, thank you. So uh, I've, I've missed out who Luke, Luke is there when I'm, I'm going through the uh, the comments. We've got a, a couple of questions for Dawn when we come back to her shortly. Um, in the meantime, if we can go back to Chris, and then obviously, Chris, if you can give us a, a brief rundown over the uh, the diggers' dig, 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 dig. <laughs> I forgot to get him to put that counter of how many times I say it wrong. D diggers, di diggers, digs. The scratch cardy type thing. Can you give us a... We watched the video earlier. Um, obviously, a little man going around, finding shotgun shells, musket balls, a gold ring. So, what's this about? Okay, it's not a scratch card. That's the first thing. Okie dokie. Right, okay. What it is, is actually, it is actually a virtual metal detecting game. Um, and the idea is we, we're going to give you two free games a day and those every game you play, you'll get points um, for everything you dig up. Even cartridge cases, ring pulls, you'll get points. Obviously, the better the, um, the find, the better the, the points. Um, and what happens there? Every day your score is, is added onto a leaderboard. Um, there are on the leaderboards, uh, which Dave, have you got a picture there? You can just show the leaderboard. Yeah. One moment. I'll bring that up. You keep chatting and I'll... Uh... I'll find it. Yeah. Now, there's, what it is, there's five top prizes. Now, this is totally free, this game. So it, it's a way of um, effectively winning a metal detector and, and all sorts of accessories. And purely by, at the end of the month, having the highest score. Now, you get two games a day. And we've timed it from 12 noon till 12 midnight and 12 midnight through the 12 noon. And what happens with this is that you get, you get one game in each 12-hour period. And the highest score for that game will go on the leaderboard. And as you move up the leaderboard, you'll see that there's in total, um, there's um, 15, you know, 15 positions you'll be able to see. And then the top five, which is slightly different. Mm -hmm. um, and if we move, there it is. Yeah, there we go. 
Um, so what you'll do with this now is that as your score, every day your score will be totaled up. And eventually, as you move up the leaderboard, when you get to the top five, you're, you're guaranteed a prize. Uh, of course, somebody can knock you off that. Um, so what we've done, we looked at ways of how you can increase your score. And the only fair way we could come up, we, you know, we don't want to... We don't think we didn't think it was fair to charge people for extra <laughs> extra goes. That would make it unfair for everybody else. So what we've done, um, we introduced um, four games extra for one token. So what you can do with that is, if say if you only scored eighty points or ninety points on your two games, um, you could actually put, spend it, spend one token and four more games, and it's only the highest score in in one of those games that will be recorded. You could end up effectively having four lower scores than your, your two free ones. So it makes it very fair for everybody. Um, you can either have a free extra games or, or, you, or you don't. Um, <clears throat> and as you move up the, um, up the leaderboard, you'll be, as you can see from that leaderboard, you can see uh, 6th to 15th. Um, you'll be, as your name comes on there, and then eventually you'll move up to the bigger leaderboard. And that's where you need to stay. Uh, and we'll call this for every, every month. On the, on the last day of the month, the game will finish. And the five prizes, obviously, you'll be you'll be able to see on there who's won the five prizes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Going around the actual um, the board, um, there's a selection of fields: pasture, ploughed. Um, is there any way you could play the video again, Dave? I don't see why not. Go on then. Right, as you can see there, you've got the little spade. Uh, now you can use the arrows to move right and forward. You can use the cursors on your laptop if you're using a laptop, or you can actually swipe the screen and that'll move your, your spade around and dig. Um, every time you dig, you see now, I think there's something in there I, I remember finding in there. Oh, no, no, I didn't. Maybe it's the next one. <clears throat> right, yeah, cartridge cases, five points. Uh, you even get points for cartridge cases, points for ring pulls. Uh, of course, when you start digging nicer things up, there's, uh, there's a gold nugget, there's a gold ring, there's Roman silver, gold and bronze. There's a nice selection of finds in throughout the fields. Um, if you, when you find anything, as you can see, it just says, you know, dig again. Find you find nothing, dig again. Um, and you can move then uh, 40, 40 attempts per game. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just waiting to see where. Now, on these fields, um, I don't know when this is going to stop now. <laughs> yeah, stop there. OK, on the game, there's a selection of fields, uh, say, ploughed and pasture. There's a farmhouse you can dig around. Um, and every month uh, we will change that location for you. So it's, it's very, very real in a way. You, you, know, you know, as you work your way around all these fields, um, I know when I played it the first time, I couldn't help think I'm going to dig by that tree. because There's always something under a tree. Um, but of course, all the, all the finds are completely random. And every time you play a new game, um those those uh, finds would change location so you can't go back to what you think might be a hot spot looks fantastic and uh, obviously free people like free yeah i mean the thing is right you can you can effectively you could win a detective and nothing you could just play your two free games every day work your way up if you're lucky enough to get good scores i mean i, I managed to score 280 on one game you know, which is pretty phenomenal because I've only managed to score about 90 to 150 on my other goes. Um, but it is possible, you know, if you're lucky, you know, you could you could be up on that leaderboard. You could we're, we're going to put um, we're going to put a metal detector up for the first prize anyway for this this draw that starts on the first of September. So you could effectively win um, a, a brand new Noctis Simplex or something purely by playing your two games every day. Mm-hmm. Chris, yes, a uh, couple of questions. Don't mind me asking. Um, Not very easy. Does it work on a mobile phone or a tablet? Yes, yeah, it's mobile f- friendly as well, yeah. Oh, God, I'm not going to get anything done at work. Um, <laughs> Chris, that sounds fantastic. I'm, yeah. going to, I'm going to be in that. I'm going, to be having, I'm going to be having a go at that. It looks good. And also, yeah. um, if I if I lived in um, sort of uh, overseas, can I? Well, how does that work if I win a detector? Is it, is it open to everyone in the world? Right, it's open to anyone in the UK and Europe. Um, right. We can't, I mean, you know, everything comes from leisure promotions. Uh, so anywhere they send out to, uh, the prize will go. Uh, right. But certainly it won't be going to America or anything. It, you know, obviously with customs and things, it just wouldn't be practical. No, I was going to say, you wouldn't make any money. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> right. uh, Rob Random in the comments asks, when will the game be live on the site? <laughs> Right, what we're doing at the moment, um, we've been winding down, we're changing a few things. We've been winding down the drawers and not replacing them over the last week. 
because uh, what we're going to do, um, we've got a, we put a free draw on there at the moment. Uh, just five prizes we've got on there, totally free. Just go on there, sign up, sign in, whatever, and get get a get a ticket, and you're in the draw. Now we've put 999 tickets, which sounds a lot, but we're not actually going to use those. Up. We're actually going to call the draw on uh, Monday the 31st. Um, that would just that would just be called and done. And then Tuesday, the first of September, we're going to be launching the game. Um, we've got something we've one thing we discovered with this as well with the draws um, is that we started off doing multiple draws with say five prizes or one coin. We've discovered through feedback that people want multi prizes rather than multi draws. So we're going to restructure the home page and we're going to have one big coin draw, one big prize draw, 50 odd prizes. Um, and what we're going to do then is we're also going to launch what we're going to call the Diggers Dips Book Club and we're going to run a draw literally one after the other, um, and we're going to have um, 10 top quality books on there for people to win, but we're only going to do very low tickets, so the chance is going to be between 6 to 1, 7 to 1. Um, we're going to do 10 books, 70 tickets, for instance, you know, uh, five or a ticket. Uh, so it's not, it's not so much about profit with this, it's, it's the fact that, um, you know, we, we everything we do, we, 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 we try and put into charities, um, you see there's a charity page on our site, you know, we, we sort of top that up as much as we can. Um, but yeah, so everything really, everything is going to be the 1st of September. The game will be made live nine o'clock in the morning. We'll be in well game, um, the book club and the new draws. Fantastic. Well, I've just uh, entered my free one for this month. See if I can get another winner. <laughs> so yeah, and if, you, if, if you're not a member, uh, obviously join up, sign up. And there's a free draw on there straight away. So what could be better? We like free. That sounds great, that, Chris. I'm really impressed yeah. with it. I, I, I really think you've done a good job on that. Yeah, I want to say thank you as well for letting me post on your um, on your Facebook yeah. page. I know you... No, you're fine. You know, well. you know, away on the page because, it's, you know, the, the one thing that groups worry about a little bit is about being spammed with, like, all these fake things. But yeah. I'm glad I've come on here tonight and spoke to you because I think that's a really good thing. I think it's really good. Yeah, but I, th I think, you know, with the game, um, if we do make anything at that game again, there will be a charitable donation on that as well from the game. Um, you know, it's very difficult. It's only micro payments at the end of the day. It's only a quid here and there. So, it, you know, but, but I, I know from a, from a personal point of view, since I've had the, the, the free access to this game, um, <laughs> I've been playing it nonstop. <laughs> you know, I, that you know, I, sat there, I sat in the car the other day waiting for my missus and I was just sat there. I thought, oh, you know, I'll have a couple of go. And I had about 10 games on there because because you can swipe it. Like when we originally, uh, when well, Paul, actually, our developer, when he when he actually designed and built this game, um, you know, you were tapping the, the little green arrows. And, you know, my fingers on the phone, I was like struggling a little bit. So uh, last week we, he said, well, look, we can make this swipe as well. Oh, God, now I can get through a game now. I can do 40, 40 digs in, in about 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. so, um, so, you know, you can really you can really power through the game now. Uh, is Digger Dips on Detector Network yet, asks Nick West. We are there, yeah. Yeah, we're working with Scott. Um, the, the site is on there. Any, the site is on there, yeah. Ah, uh, well, and I found out who Luke is as well. It's not our Luke. It's Luke from Anglo Detecting Unearthing Our Past. Yes, Rob, I am one of them. <laughs> I missed that. So uh, happy birthday to Luke. And also, if she's watching, happy birthday to Dialect from Nocta Macro for yesterday as well. Um, what happy time birthday, Dialect. So uh, we, 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 all our questions um, for yourself, young man. Uh, we've got anything else to add then? We, we, uh, well, if, if anybody else does have a question for Chris about Digger's Depths, if you can get that in now and um, we'll ask him straight away. Is there anything else, Chris, uh, you want to add? Um, no, I'll give a shout out to uh, Mark Betcher and Metal Detectives. He's sorting out all the coin drawers for us. Um, so all the coins come from um, Essex, Essex Coins um, and he does all that for us. Um, obviously, shout out to Pete as well at Leisure Promotions because he does all the dispatch of all our prizes. Um, yeah, yeah, I see, I see the where's my I can't even where's my finger. There it is. <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, apart, no, apart from that, I think that's pretty much it. You know, say first of September, every like 
seven o'clock on uh, the 31st, the free draw will be called. OK, and then um, let's say every, everything really starts then on the month, on the Tuesday the 1st. Fantastic. So uh, a big relaunch for Digger Dips as well. Yeah, yeah. Not only, not only that many changes other than just, you know, everything. <laughs> 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 apart, from the, apart from the look, it'll still be red. <laughs> uh, John Clayton asks uh, Adrian Gaylor, what red wine are you drinking? I'm on the Merlot. It's um, Ribena, but I ran out of uh, tumblers. So, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm on the Merlot as well. <laughs> medicinal. I'm on the uh, I'm on a health kick. I'm on a bottled water. Oh dear! Damn Bold health crap. kicks. <clears throat> it's not working I'm a yet. Lemonade with um, a little bit of um, rhubarb gin in it. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> uh, Bubba Williams says, "Good luck, Chris. I'm sure it'll be a success." Oh, thanks, Bubba. So I think uh, I think we all agree with that. I know the people who are using the site currently will agree. Um, and, and you know, I've I've won on the site, so I can't complain. I'm all right. Much. <laughs> Shh, don't say that. Don't say <laughs> that. Giving the game away. Right. So, uh, Chris, you can stay with us by all accounts. Uh, by all accounts. By all means, uh, ask Dawn's any questions. But I'm going to jump back to Dawn now because we had some questions earlier that we um, we didn't get to. So I'm just scrolling up to find them. And the first one was from Aaron Weedle. Will this replace your AT Max, Dawn? The uh, the Apex. Um, depending. I mean, it's a bit of a no. It's not. My Apex is not going in the in the cupboard just yet. Um, I still like my AP, my AT Max because of the reactivity, because of the depth I've got with the big coil and everything else like that. It depends on where I'm going to, you know. So if I was going on a stubble field, I would take the apex. If I was going on a beach, take the apex. On my pasture, I, I do prefer my AT Max. Is that because I've used the AT Max for three years and I've only used this other one for a few hours? I'm not sure yet. But um, yeah, no, Max is definitely not gone in the cupboard yet. It's <laughs> definitely not gone in the cupboard yet. Uh, young Mr. Peter L asks, it's obviously labelled as an ace, but should people think of it as a beginner's model or are the features and performance pushing it above that? Um, I would put it mid-range, really. I wouldn't say it's beginner's. I would say it's a bit mid-range. It's very easy to use. You know, if you look at the... If, when you're scrolling through the menu and everything else like that, it's very easy to use. It's quite good if you've got a bit of knowledge about um, a metal detector and understanding frequencies, depending on what you're looking for, but about what if you want to go into a single frequency and have a look for, you know, if you're looking for small bits of gold or whatever. I would put it, I would say it's, it, it's took the ace range to an absolute new level. That's what it's done. Whether it's, it's not replaced the AT Max, but it's not supposed to be, and it's not, it's not been marketed to be that. But as as at uh, that level of money and that level of of a detector, it, it's proper something to be, um, you know, it's it is up there, definitely. And uh, going back to another question, uh, it, at that point, the Apex is it as powerful? Is it as good as the the AT Max? Um, in, in, well, it depends on what you mean by powerful. Um, it's not got the, it's not as its reactivity is not as fast. But I wouldn't expect it to be. It's not supposed to be. Um, but in, you know, in a lot of ways, it's, it's, you know, the, the coil's really good. But I can get in smaller places like that. I say I can detect a lot longer because it's lighter. Um, all those things. But I think you know, it it was advertised to be the the a you know the apex of the ace range, which mm. it is. You know, as an upgrade to the ace range. Um, it, all day long, you know, you've got your wireless, you've got your, all your different frequencies, you've got multi frequency, you've got your sound frequency, you've got all that stuff. The, you know, the, the, they're not they're not going to try and take the AT Max out of it because they're going to produce an AT Apex, aren't they? It's never oh, been it's it. never been it's never been out there to advertise to take on the Equinox eight hundred. 
or yeah. take on a day or so. He's, he's never been advertised at that. It's not at the price point to take on that. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, no, it's not, not going to take me a team max out, but it's a close. It's close. Kevin Creswell asks, is the Garrett Apex deep as Maxi AT Max? Um, well, it's strange. It's a strange, it's, you know, a lot of people, I think, have been quite disappointed that, that they wanted me to do tests on that. They wanted me to do, with, you know, this test and that test and what have you. I had a test machine, so I wasn't going to do them sort of tests. Now, um, call me old-fashioned. But I, I always think that I like to, you know, find stuff that's in the ground, you know, because when it's buried in the ground, it's got the halo effect on it and everything else like that. I think you get a true representation of how deep a, a machine can go. These All these little air tests and all things like that, I mean, call me what you want, but I, I, I don't think they're very accurate, to be honest. Yeah. Agreed. Now, I've, I've found, I think in general, it's not quite as deep as my AT Max, but I mean, remember, I have a massive coil on that. Uh, but I have found things eight and a half inch deep. Now, there was an, uh, a video on the internet the other day by somebody called uh, Ohio Metal Detector or somebody who had, had used an old test machine that was one of the very first prototypes that were out there. And it was saying that it couldn't find... Um, a, a target under it that the, the iron was masking this target. Now, I don't know what he was thinking when he did that. I mean, well, the first time I took it out, I found I don't know if you, anybody watched the video, but I, I took it out and I found quite a large piece of iron and I pulled it out. I was quite surprised because the signal was quite high. And I, anyway, I took the iron away and about th three inches under that, so it must have been going about eight inches at this point, I found a little blob of aluminium. You know, it, it wasn't anything silver or anything like that. But the iron definitely didn't mask what I'd found underneath. So, I mean, that would have gone down to about eight inches. And I have found a, a few things that have been quite, you know, deep like that. Um, so. I, th I think the multi-flex technology is the key thing here. Um, and until it's been used a lot, it will, like Dawn said, it will it'll work in different ways yeah. and that's why i think on the beach it's it, it works so well um the multi frequency i mean what's the at max 14 13.6 right? yes yeah, like that yeah yeah so you're running loads of different um frequencies on the uh the apex and i think so, it, it, the depth uh, you you might get some more depth on some targets. You might get less depth on some targets compared to yeah. that. It's one of those things, isn't it? You don't know until everyone starts using it. Um, but I think the new multiflex technology will benefit it massively for the money, anyway. So you, you've think, actually so used I the. Like that. I mean, I, a lot of people want you to go out and immediately start doing nail tests and, and nail bed things, but. You know, I wanted to, you know, call me old-fashioned, but I wanted to go out and actually dig stuff up and see how deep it was. But, yeah, it takes a lot of learning. It takes a lot of experience. And it takes a lot of holes to sort of really work it out what it is. Yeah, digging everything, yeah. yeah. Adrian, you've you've got the machine yourself. What are your initial thoughts? Um, first, I think every, that's why I was interested on what Dawn said about um, I asked her three key things that she felt straight away the minute she got it out of the box and used it. The weight, the ergonomics of it, the balance. Um, it is it is really light, really, really light. I mean, it is, isn't it? And it swings really well. The tones are nice. Um, I think, you know, like Dawn said, people comparing it with the, um, the Max and the Equinox and all the other machines out there. I think if you look at how much it is, um, it's it's not a beginner machine, but it could be if you're quite techy. I think if you were if you were quite switched on, you could use it as a beginner machine. But for an upgrade, um, and you're, if you're a Garrett man or woman, um, it, it, it's it's a huge change, but an easy one. The the controls are, are really easy to use. And one thing I would say, if you've got the wireless headphones with it, Dawn, yeah. They are cracking, and they have got a, um, signal speed five times faster than Bluetooth. 
Well, I've been using them for three years anyway. I've, been, I've yeah. had them on for three years with my AT Max. But and and it, then the headphones are absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. I, cu- I, couldn't, I couldn't recommend anything better. I mean, there's right. no lag on them or anything else. They're really, really comfy. They don't hurt your head at all. No, that's and, right. Um, but if you, if you look that they come with a machine like they do, that's pretty good going. Uh, I think yeah. if you look at other machines in the market. Have you charged your headphones yet, Dawn? Yeah. How long do you get out of them, roughly? Just out of interest. Oh, I get a lot. I get, well, it, it's hard. I, I mean, I never want them to run out. So, but I, I've been out two, three digs sometimes with them. You know, like I'm probably yeah. nine hours. Yeah. I've never yeah. run them out until they've, 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 they've gone. Yeah. I just chuck, I, I, I plug them in and charge them before I go. But I mean, even the technology for being able to use the wireless pinpointer. I mean, if anybody's not used the Garrett wireless pinpointer, the AT one. I mean, when I first got one of those, I thought it was a bit of a gimmick. I thought, oh, well, it was just a bit of a gimmick. But to hear them in your headphones is is so much better than that. Well, people, know, I've made the buzz noise now because when I first got the headphones and nobody could hear it, everyone said, well, we like to hear the buzz noise. So I started doing buzz in my videos. So I started doing it. Uh, but the wireless pinpointer, the headphones, it, oh, all that wireless technology that's in the Apex is absolutely it's a game changer. It really yeah. is. One thing I did notice as well is obviously I've got quite a few machines and um, I've got a Nocta Macro Simplex, um, which I've used for a while. And Nocta created the um, mute volume, uh, option on, I think it's 2.77 software. And so, it, it, you know, rather than your aftermarket pinpointer or whatever brand you've got interfering with your detector, you can. New, the uh, simplex now with the uh, apex i use two different pinpointers and um both of them aren't made by garrett and they didn't interfere um which was quite nice to know um because quite often you you'll, you'll get interference from a, a different brand of pinpointer but the two i used which are quite common didn't interfere with the uh, apex which is a little thing but it, it is annoying if you're digging 40 50 holes or plus and you're constantly getting every five yeah, minutes. Yeah. It is annoying. So, yeah, they, they seem to have – and I've used it with another – my friend, we went out, and he's got another machine that's got different frequencies, uh, and it wasn't affected by that either. So, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Well, that's another good thing that I was saying, because before the old Garrett's I always had, like, four frequencies where you could just change so he wasn't interfering with your, your friends. Um, this one's got um, eight on each each – Frequency. I mean, I went. I went and stood near Kev, who's me, who, who I go digging with, and he's got an Equinox 800. And when I very first went out and I switched it on, it was like, wee, wee, wee. and I just, I just flicked the channels up to channel seven. What, what, what was it doing? Absolutely silent. What was Nothing. it doing, Dawn? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's nothing worse than when your friends are interfering with you in the field. <laughs> <laughs> It's not good yeah. when you get interfered with in the field. No, no. Um, and Look I, at Paul's head pop. Uh, Chris's head pop up then. <laughs> <laughs> he was asleep and he was up <laughs> like that, like a little meerkat. <laughs> He's not got his trousers on. I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. I, 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 oh yeah, that, I mean that's the big thing. Yes, that. he has. When you're on big hunts, you know, like and, and things like that. You mean to to be able to have eight channels on each frequency. To be able mm. to move away, you know, from somebody else. That's that's quite a lot that you, you can find somewhere that you're absolutely not interfered with by anybody else. Just got a question on here from James Newman. Do yeah. Garrett still use the two pin connection? Hope that doesn't cause problems like I had with my old AT Pro. I don't think they do use a two pin connection. No, they don't use a two pin it's like a five thing that goes <laughs> <laughs> what does it do, Don? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, five prong. There it is, you see? Just the same as what I was doing. Yeah. No, it, it wasn't very different to what you were doing, Don. I don't know what you were cupping there. <laughs> that was the same. Look. No, it's not. That looks rude. Uh, <laughs> another question off uh, Darren Booth. Does it have updatable firmware? Oh, no. 
Can I ask? Well, this oh, is cool. the big question, isn't it? And we don't know. I mean, he's got he's got um, a, a small USB connection, things like that. We've not said it's going to be what they tried to do, and that's why they sent it to all those testers. I mean, people have, we've been testing it for Garrett, not for the general public as such, and that I think that's why people have got upset when they said, "Why have you not tested it next to an ale and things like that?" Um, I think they're trying to get it right the first time. You know, Garrett's uh, get things right the first time, but they don't need to keep updating. I mean, updating's great for some people that are technical, but, I mean, I keep seeing people on my group that are, are wrecking machines and all the XP arcs because they're downloading patches that are from they shouldn't be, which, you know, if you're quite tech-savvy, you wouldn't do it. But there's a lot of people out there that are not tech-savvy and that they're wrecking machines because they're... The downloading down uh, updates that they shouldn't be updating. Mm. So I think they're probably trying to avoid that. But whether they can do or not, I mean, who knows? There is a little shot there of uh, a USB C port. Uh, and sorry. Oh. So it now. There it is. There's a little USB C port there. Now, like Dawn said, um, when the Vanquish came out, that had a slot for updating it, and a lot of people were saying, "Oh, maybe they will, maybe they won't." And the the Vanquish has had an update. The Equinox just had a recent update, and yeah. I think it's something which, um, if it's not broken, you, you've got the option um, to update it if you want. And I think, like Dawn said at the very beginning of uh, the broadcast tonight, they've listened to their customers, um, and there's another other manufacturers seem to be it's getting hot out there with uh, metal detecting manufacturers and i think they're having to listen to their customers now so mm. the ability to update it um in the future is possibly going to be there you know well as jerry b morris says in one of his comments there's so many machines in the marketplace now more in the pump line uh, and not all will survive no well look at whites yeah absolutely yeah well, they've got them then yeah. Uh, I know we spoke about it before. Uh, welcome to the, the show, Sid Perry. Um, we did mention it before, but he must have missed it. Will there be any other coils available for the Apex? Yeah, they're, they're, they're actually uh, – I spoke to Steve Moore about this, and they are actually in the process – they're making some uh, new coils for the Apex. So there's going to be a different range, a bigger one and, and blah, blah, for uh, the Apex. But, yeah. At the minute, you can't use any. You can't use a Nell or any or a Mars coil or anything like that. But they they are in the process of making them. Yeah, fantastic. Cool. I've got a question, just a quick one. Your Apex screen. Um, I've been out with it in the field, and you know, like you get these expensive mobile phones, the screen doesn't scratch. Well, yeah. when I took the, like the little thin screen protector off the front of the. Uh, Did you take it off? Yeah, yeah, you have to because otherwise you lose six inches of uh, depth on the machine. Did you not know that? No, I was joking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people do iPhones; they leave it on and then phone up Apple and say, "I can't hear people properly." But I was—I don't know what they've used, Garrett, but the screen on the Apex is really, really um, looks like scratch-proof. You know, like some like that elephant glass. Well, it, it's like glass, but it's like plastic. It's really clever. Um, you see, the thing is, I was going to do it in my next video because oh, I know sorry. a lot of people are all CD and they don't like taking stuff off. So what I was going to do it was going to peel it off, like, and put some music on it, like scary music. Yeah. And I was going to take it off because they am quite rough, me. I'm, I'm not like one of them, them gentle I lady people. I, I do rough <laughs> stuff up, you know, and I thought if a, an, an apex screen can, can like, last with me and it can last with anybody yeah so yeah. That, that's in my next video that actually i've not done it yet but that's my plan is i'm going to take it off dead slow there's a lot of machines you press the screen like really hard and it'll almost go in whereas yeah. this that's proper solid it's almost like gorilla glass it is very it looks very delicate but it's yeah, not is it? well, i mean i noticed that when i very first opened the box up um, and I did my unboxing. And from looking at it from what I'd seen, because I've been waiting for it for weeks and weeks and weeks, I thought it looked quite delicate. 
Mm. And when he opened it up, I was quite surprised about how strong and, and solid it was. Yeah. Is that what you're saying now? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and the shaft um, oh, uh, is strong. It is. It, everything's strong about I mean, there's no wobble on it, is there? No. I mean, people say, well, why have you kept the same, why have they kept the same shaft with them bolts on it? I mean, I think they kept them because they were, you know, it, it, you know, it's very solid. It doesn't, it doesn't wobble. You're not going to get any breakage on it. Um, I'm poking yeah. Chris. Oh, I've yeah. been told to give Chris a nudge. <laughs> Is he awake, yeah. Chris? Yeah, Chris. Yeah, right away. yeah. Have you got any uh, questions about the Apex at all, Chris? No, I use the AT Pro, and I've got no no intention of changing it. And what, what, obviously, you, you like that. That's your, your machine of choice. Yeah, I love it. You will do when you get a, when you get an, an AT Apex, Chris. Then you, your blood will be like, oh. No, I does know blood, does blood do that? <laughs> You'll be like, I need one of them. I need one of them. Um, yeah. I... <laughs> oh, just dropped it. <laughs> um, it's probably broken the glass now, but anyway, yeah. the apex is on its way now, isn't it? So people are going to be able well, to do all the, the, the tests that they want to do and everything else like that. Um, I think that I think they're, they're arriving at the next couple of weeks, and already some of the dealers in America have also uh, like uh, have got them. Um, so and I think Redton's have, are, are, are due to have a collection in, so you know, the people that have been on pre order are going to get them. Hmm. Um, and then you'll be able to see for yourself, aren't you? But I think it's going to be a fantastic, absolutely fantastic addition to the Garrett range. Marvellous. Well, I think we've uh, spoke lots and lots about the Apex and obviously Digger's Depths. Uh, we've seen some new inclusions in the show, which there'll be more coming in the near future. Um, <laughs> hello, Lloyd. I'm not saying that. Uh, <clears throat> but, uh, yeah. We, we, we will be evolving. Um, what I'm going to do now, we, we, we're nearing the end of the show. Uh, oh, sorry, one more question from Rod West. What price will they be starting at? So the, the, the price that they're starting at in the UK, it, oh, let me, I don't want to get this wrong, is £459.99 without MS3 headphones. Um, and they're going to be £519.95 with MSN phones. And there's no deals and 10% off or anything else like that, anywhere else like that. So that's what the price is going to be. Marvelous. Which I think is for, for what it is, with, with, you know, with all its wireless technology and everything else like that, I think is a really good price. Mm. <clears throat> well, there you go. That's uh, all about the Apex. So, um before we do go, I'm gonna. Uh, I've got a few mentions uh, for the past year to put out, and um, also I want to play this video from the um, Aussie Gold Hunters as well. So before we go, Dawn, can you point people to your Facebook and YouTube? So obviously, if you don't know me already, Digger Dawn Metal Detecting on YouTube. Um, just nearly seventeen thousand subs, <laughs> and I've also got um, a big quite a big group on Facebook with about 15,000 people on Facebook um, which is Diggadar Metal Detecting again, it's quite easy <laughs> Fantastic and Chris, uh, yourself can you uh, point, point out people to Digger's Dips and also any mentions etc Yeah um, well, it's diggersdips.com nice and easy to remember um, uh, could I just answer one question I see somebody asked Certainly. Uh, Rob Rob Random said, will you be sponsoring anyone with the Diggers Dips brand? Um, everything happens at some stage. We're only 10 weeks old, but I, I would like to think at the end, you know, within a year, there'd be a little football team running around with Diggers Dips on the back of their T-shirts. But right, right now, obviously, 10 weeks old, no, we won't be doing anything like that. Well, they all have a knocked a, a knocked a, a football pitch with a mini hoard. Oh, I've moved. You bet. He's moved <laughs> me. So, um, so that's Digger's Dips and that's Digger's Dawn. Uh, also, obviously, thank you to Adrian Gaylor tonight. Adrian, if you want to uh, pop out any 
interesting information, shout outs, etc. Uh, no. um, no. <laughs> just to say, obviously, Treasure Hunting's magazine's out in the shops now. Um, and obviously, Greenlight Publishing, who are the publisher, have many, many books, and they have done for over 30, 40 years now at greenlightpublishing.com. Um, if you like reading about buttons or buckles or crotal bells, there's a book for it. So uh, have a look at greenlightpublishing.com. Um, there's some great books on there uh, about detecting. I'm actually looking for my latest book from Greenlight, and I can't see where it is. I love Greenlight books. I'm always buying stuff from there. Oh, yeah, Greenlight's I'm, immense. Um, what book is it, Dave, you're looking for? I don't know. can't remember. I, I, I just know I've got one. Oh, there there. it is. There it is. Uh, British Artifacts, Volume 2, Middle Saxon and Vikings by Brett Hammond. It's me on the front there. Oh, look. Um, There he is. Yeah. Casually uh, after work shot, (laughs) Julian and Evan Hart said, we need to get a photograph with the uh, vanquished. But, um, Mm. yeah, there's there's worldwide shipping as well uh, with Greenlight Publishing. But they've been writing books for 30, 40, well, 40 years. Uh, same as Metal Detective magazine, and it is the UK's biggest magazine. So, uh, yeah. Um, TC Detects, Tony K once said, Adrian, mention Team Rutus UK. Who? Oh, no, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, hi, hi, Tony. Yes, not forgetting, um, I'm, I'm a Rutus team expert along with Tony K. Wood and many others. Um, Rutus team expert. Uh, if you just Google it, you'll find it. Uh, we're people who have uh, Rutus machines. Uh, I have an Auto 71. So I, like a, I like a Rutus machine. Do you know what, Dawn? It's it's funny. It, does look, it doesn't quite look as swish as a lot of machines, but you've got 71 frequencies on there, and it's not a hard machine to use. A lot of people think it is, but, I mean, last year I found that medieval 13th century gold ring, didn't I, Dave, with it? Um, I found mm-hmm. many nice finds. It's um, it's like buying a car and you want to have a one litre L for a day, and then the next day you might want to have a one a Cosworth. You can you can adjust it for a different settings. Well, I did all one a detective one. I was really impressed with the reactivity on it. Yeah, yeah, it's really quick. And do you know what I love about it? It's a little tiny company in Poland. There's a guy called Eric and his wife um, Wyola. And they do everything themselves. He writes the software. He creates the circuit boards. And they're bringing out a new one soon, um, which Tony gave me an update the other day. There may be some new Rutus products, but there's a new Rutus machine, like many others, like c and all that, coming out soon. But, yeah, big shout-out to Rutus Team Expert. We actually uh, published on the Archaeology and Metal Detecting Magazine website a few weeks ago an uh, an interview with Eric. Uh, which That's was right. very eye-opening, and and obviously when you say about them doing everything, it, it, it you know he's such a nice chap and and Viola as well. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, and when you say it's simple to use, do you know who I am? Yeah. <laughs> I had to use yours and Tony's settings, and I still couldn't use it. You now we're a simplex. Right, you can't even buy the right hair dye, Dave. So you know, <laughs> hair dye. <coughs> hair dye. Bear, bear. <laughs> that one works. Uh, right so thank you everybody it's been fantastic Uh, I hope everybody's enjoyed the new format uh, the new inclusions as I say background's going to be changing other things are going to be changing me and Luke have been uh, sadly a lot busy this week so we've not been able to do everything that we wanted to but you know the news worked uh, the images worked the the co-host you've been fantastic tonight Adrian obviously as have the guests Chris and Dawn uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you all, as usual. Um, so, but thank I'm you all. I've met Adrian tonight on your show. Yeah. <laughs> you meet all the best people here. Do you know well, what? I think, I think it's very clever, Dawn, as well, how Dave has got each one of us in each room of his house. I know. <laughs> it looks like we're all over the country. So. You're upstairs and I'm downstairs. Hold on a minute. Chris isn't here because the internet keeps going. I'll put a water bottle in Chris's bed. Chris, <laughs> <laughs> on bottom. So, uh, to, to finish tonight, I've got one thing to share and a video as well. So, before uh, I go, again, thank you to everybody. It's been fantastic. I just want to do some shout-outs to people who've been with us over uh, the past year. So, I've got a book with everything written down, so I don't forget anyone. In no particular order, 
Uh, Julian Evan Hart, Peter Terrell, Mark Betcher, Dilek Gonule, uh, Gary Cook, Lee Hull, Gary Blackwell, Adrian Gayler, uh, Andre Figueredo, Adam Weedle, Stephen Gray, uh, Steve Hambleton, Mark Lawson, uh, Big Fines, Little Fines, Dick Chris Bailey, uh, Celtic Stags, who we've got something in a minute, unable to put the video on because we haven't had a chance. But we've got a, we give a shout out to the event. Scotty B, Steve Tomlinson, Scott Holden from Detector Network, Catherine Lang and John Finnis, Martin Zero, Tony Kaywood, Addicted to Bleeps, Scott and Kimmy DeBay, uh, Gary Brunn, can't read what that one says, Digger Dawn, Gary Sto uh, Graham Stokes, uh, Kev Malchese, Adrian Staples, Rick Landaker, Kev Whitmore, uh, Marius Milker, that's Brad, Steve Pettican, and if I've forgot anybody who has been on the show, I do apologise, Nick West, who I'm going to get back soon, because we all want to learn about more about the uh, the metal detecting war relics. So, uh, again, thank you for, to each and every one of them. Luke, if I can share the screen before we go, that will be fantastic. <clears throat> and uh, first up, there's an event coming up. Uh, Celtic Stags, if you go to the Celtic Stags Facebook page, you will see they have an event at Strata Florida Abbey, which I'd not heard about until uh, Craig told me all about it. Uh, it's on the 4th of September until the 6th of September, and that's in. Are you ready for this? Here goes Dave with words that he can't pronounce. A 12th century former Cistercian Abbey situated just outside Pont Red. Defend the guide near Tregarian in the county of Caridigian. Uh The abbey was founded in 1164. So there's that event. If you can pop over if interested, uh, it's a weekend rally. And uh, honestly, from the information that I've received, the images, uh, it's, it's directly opposite. You can see the abbey exactly from where the event is. Uh, so that's that, and I said, did say I wanted to show the video. So this is the video of oh, mate, look, it's around this. Here. Look, ah. oh, mate, it's right out here. Look, she's falling out a lot. No. They're actually the big ones, or big targets. They're actually sort of hard to pinpoint. This because the signal's so strong. You're right, mate. Yeah, I'm good, mate. I'm good, good. You don't want to give it to him? No. <laughs> <laughs> I hate doing this. I love it, but I hate it. Because these nuggets are worth well and truly over gold price. If you ding it. Are we through? Hey, look, 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 Paul. What do you see there, mate? Oh. Hey? It's gold. Ha <laughs> <laughs> It's gold, gold, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you I'm get it, Paul. You get it. You get it. No, 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 no. Grab it. <laughs> Go on. If you don't, I'm going to hurry up. Oh. Oh. Mate, this is gold. Look at it. Oh, mate, look, it's around here. Look. Ah. Oh, mate, it's right out here. Look, can you pull it out or not? No, I can't. I can't. Ah. I can't. Woo. Pop it out. Now we get excited. Oh. Look, oh, oh. look. Oh. <laughs> hey, look. 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 Oh, mate. Grab it out. Oh, oh it's getting bigger. <laughs> it's growing. <laughs> I, uh. feel like a, I feel like a little beaver. All right. Get it, mate. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. Go on. Just try and get under it. Pop it. Look at that. Oh. Can I pick it? No, grab it, Paul. Grab it. Grab it. Grab it. Ha 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 so happy for you, mate. We've done it. Oh, I've got a tear in my eye for you. That, that, feel that. Oh. This is what we come here for, mate. Feel that, mate. <laughs> DJ. Hey, this is Walking Dead. I'm Lord Tony Shaw.